Moving to community-based employment for the people that we support honors the dreams and mission of the group of parents who founded SOS. They did not want limitations on people in the community with disabilities. They wanted them to be equipped to make their own way in life, to be a part of the very fabric of their communities, to thrive, to live as independently as possible. We make these connections with different people and different groups in our communities, and when we make these connections, it kind of defines who we are. Uh, David Schwartz in this book, Crossing the River, talks about these connections and how important they are, especially to people with disabilities. And what he says is that people make these connections and as people become a real part of their community, they go from being people with disabilities to being just people. So they become, you know, Mary who works down the street or uh, John who uh, works at Macy's. They become not a person with a disability, but a person. I've watched uh, SOS and, and SERVs grow through the, through the years, over the decades, uh, if you might, only with one, one, one thought in mind. It's very simple, uh, bringing out the best, the full potential uh, in every individual, not looking for the limitations that they have, but looking for the abilities uh, that they have. That's what it's all about. That makes all the difference uh, in the world when you just flip the script and not ask the question, what is it he cannot do? But the question is, what can she do? Uh, it's amazing. There's so much more out there for them, that there are so many things that they can do, and we should not keep them limited to a workshop setting, that we should let them be all that they could and all they wanted to be. And those guys brought me such a sense of pride. And since then, they've not only been a source of pride for me, but for their families and for the other people in our workshop. We have folks who look up to those guys because they were the trailblazers. They went out there first. They made it happen and they set such a wonderful example for the rest of us to follow. Through employer engagement and outreach, they have worked collectively to educate, advocate, and help employers realize that people with disabilities provide tremendous contributions to any workplace and to society in general. Today is about more than closing a do the doors of a workshop. It's about the doors that are opening at business all around West Tennessee. Businesses who have taken a chance on persons supported by SERVs and found hardworking, dedicated members of their workforce. So as we celebrate today, we look to the future with anticipation and knowing that each person supported by SERVs will be fully included within their respective communities. It is hard to let that child go. My child has been with SERVs ever since 97. She has always wanted a job, but it was me holding her back. But after talking with people at SERVs that had time to sit down and really talk to me, I turned her loose. I put them in their hand, in God, yes. and things went real well. People with disabilities, they want to be treated fairly. They want to be respected in their jobs. They want to have the same opportunities that we do, to live in typical community settings, to engage in meaningful ways, not token participation, but really be true, true and productive citizens. And part of that is work. And if that's one challenge I give for all of us, it's to say employment and then what? Employment plus, right? Because it just doesn't end with a job. It's about advancement to your fullest potential as a human being. It's about having friends and relationships. It's about having the ability to take risks and sometimes fall. <laughs>